The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. All right. Hello, hello, uh, Clean Nation. We are here today. This is Tracy Thompson, obviously not Mike. You probably have seen and heard from me before. I am back and I am joined today by Christina Atkins, right? Or Akins. 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 You know, it's yeah. so funny. I don't think I've, as long as I've known you, I don't <laughs> think I've ever actually said your last name out loud. And so yeah. I, it just occurred to me, I'm like, I'm probably going to screw this up. Okay. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Akins. Um, Christina is amazing. She uh, has been in our world in Grow My Cleaning Company for a while. How long has it been? Christina, do you um, know? A little over a year. Just okay. A All right. Year. Fantastic. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and in that year, um, the reason Christina is here back with us today, I don't know if you've ever done a podcast with us before. Yeah. Yeah. No. You haven't? Oh, okay. No, this, this is the first time. So this is exciting. Yeah. This is going to be super fun. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. Christine is here today because she has really personally grown so much. I know because I've had a front row seat to Christina's growth over the uh, last year. So I'd like to dive right in. Her The name of her business is Five Star Concierge Cleaning, and she's a residential cleaning company in Canton, Georgia, not Canton, Ohio. I didn't know there was a Canton, Georgia. So, um, Christina, share a little bit with everyone your initial journey, like pre-Grow My Cleaning Company, kind of where your head was at. Like, where, what, what were you thinking about yourself and and your business and your place in the, in that world? Okay. Yeah. Um, before Grow My Cleaning Company, I was um, a struggling business owner. I had had my cleaning company for four years. Um, I was still cleaning. I did have two employees Mm -hmm. and I had no systems and processes. And it's funny because I have listened to the podcast for a couple of years, um, you know, through my journey with Grow My Cleaning Company and and my own cleaning business. So um, I had reached out in the um, Grow My Cleaning Company Facebook page. And I had put a message, um, you know, is anybody at $100,000 a year in revenue and have systems and processes because I could really use some help? I was like, I know I need something, but I don't know how to get from point A to point B and I need some help. And so you guys reached out to me and, um, you know, it's completely changed my life. I you know, not, not just my business, but me as a person Yes. and the, I, what has taken place over the last year, I never would have imagined, honestly, like when I first came in, I thought it was only going to be about my business. Like, I just want to fix my business. Right. I want to get it from here to here. Um, I just, I really had no idea, um, how much I would actually grow as a, as a person. Um, and it's just been amazing. And that's such a, it's so true. We hear this over and over, but when you're, when you're an owner, especially an owner operator that you, uh, and you grew your business from the ground up, especially some of some, some of Queen Nation has bought into like either they have a franchise or they bought into their business or took it over from someone. But either way, most of the time, the owner operator, right. That pours everything that they are into their business, it's very correlated, personal growth and the growth of the business. And when we hit a a business growth block, you can be sure that it starts with an internal block of some sort, some sort of mindset block. So Christina, I'd love to, to get your insights on some of the very first, like, ahas when you first came in like what were some of those major shifts that you just go whoa okay I was not thinking of it like that I was not thinking of myself that way um I you know I always thought I would have to clean Mm -hmm. um and so I don't think I could really um 
see myself in any other role besides um, cleaner and owner. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, you guys really started diving in with me um, about how to not work in your business, but work on your business, that was I like, oh, okay, well, you can actually do that and not have to clean. So that was the first, that was the first aha moment. Yes. Um, and, you know, confidence, I think that was one of the hardest things for me to really, um, you know, gain momentum with was my confidence level. Mm -hmm. And um, after being a part of the group and, you know, many calls, um, I finally would start to open up mm -hmm. and, you know, just a little bit over a little bit each time I would start to speak and start to share more and build relationships with people in the group. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, another light bulb went off that I'm not the only one that struggles. I'm not the only one that has went through X, Y, and Z. There's other people just like me um, who have been through the same things. And I think really just putting myself out there and becoming vulnerable um, mm -hmm. and just really sharing with people about where I'm at in the moment and not trying to make myself seem better uh, than what's really going on uh, was a was a really big deal for me to really advance and to really dive in and move to the next level. You so, know, I, I, I love all of that. I want to circle back around to the one of the first things you just said there, because it's so, so important and so powerful. Um, and that is your, your whole sort of paradigm shift behind, behind your change and your shift in your business about being, being the owner that uh, we call it the stakeholder, right? Being, being the stakeholder and being the cultural builder, being the um, less in working in the business, you know, not just like certainly not cleaning, but, but as you're, even after you got out of cleaning, still shifting this mindset, uh, I can, I should be working on the business rather than in the business. And that's such a, a big shift for so many people. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can give an example aside from cleaning. So let's assume after you got out of cleaning, where you started seeing how much more effective you are as an owner stakeholder, when you have that mindset um, working on the business than in the business, where were some of the other areas you were working in the business? And maybe once upon a time you thought you had to do that. You had to work in the business in that way. And now you're not. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is employees and hiring. Um, and I, I felt like that I had to work side by side with them mm. and that I was not, um, I don't want to say not good enough, but you know, my place was to be, uh, shoulder to shoulder with them in the trenches. And, um, I, I, I realized over time that my, my role was better served outside of that and a step above and being a leader. Um, and that was really, um, uh, the biggest thing for me, um, that sticks out is my role in the business is being a leader, not being a cleaner. And, um, and to that end, I'd love to ask you about this because this is really interesting. And, and this is one of those areas that I think, and I hear this a lot and it's a, I call it a euphemism. It's a euphemism that really covers up something fundamental that will keep you from growing. And Clean Nation, I want you to listen to this. Tune in, okay? Because if you've ever thought this or heard it or believed it, this one belief, this euphemism, will undoubtedly keep you from scaling and growing. Here it is. You know... I, I would never have my people do anything that I'm not willing to do or that I haven't already done myself. And they say, it with, okay, you know, beating their chest. <laughs> and yeah. it was like, and it's, it's so tricky because on the surface, 
it sounds like appropriate pride and, you know, work ethic. And it's like that good old American, you know, <laughs> moxie or whatever, but really underneath it. And I know, you know, this, right, Christy, this like underneath that is really, it's, it's a, it's a, a euphemism for, I'm never really going to be the true leader that I need to be, that my business needs me to be because I relate way too much with this. I need to be the worker, whether it's being out in the field, whether it's being, you know, do handling all the scheduling and all the nitty gritty. And I'd like, I have to do all, wear all the hats or I don't mm -hmm. deserve to be the owner. Mm -hmm. And then they feel guilty when they delegate. And I'd love for you to speak to that very specific. I don't think we've ever really gotten down to this nitty gritty level of this kind of mindset. What, what was it like for you when you finally like really that light bulb really went on and we're like, ding, okay, that's not going to serve me. It, it took a little bit of time um, because you said the key word deserve. I uh -huh. didn't feel like I deserved to be in a role above them. Right. And that's crazy. Like that is so, I don't, I can't explain that, but I know I'm not the only one that's felt that way. Oh no, it's very um, common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so when, you know, when I got to the place to where I believed in myself and I knew on the inside, I deserved it, then I started understanding that I don't need to be the person to wear all the hats and do everything. Um, and that was so freeing. And my business was able to grow once I was letting go of doing work that I shouldn't be doing. And I could spend that time putting it into working on the business and, and growing it. Cause that was the whole reason that I started, right. Was to, right was to scale my business and to, to make it grow. But I had to shift my mindset out of cleaner into leader. And it took some time and so a lot of coaching, a lot of great coaching. And um, I can't tell you how long it was or when the light bulb actually went off, but it was so it was such a relief to mm. uh, finally come to that conclusion. Then I could grow. Yes. Then, then it was like, then I could do X, Y, and Z. So, but I think um, deserving it, you have to, you have to know that you're worth what you're putting your effort into for sure. And, and furthermore, it's, it's also really an impediment to your company and to your team. So we, we are fooling ourselves when we keep telling ourselves, well, I, you know, I wouldn't, expect them to do anything that I'm not doing or that I wouldn't do. And, and there's yep. that, that's the excuse that we're telling ourselves, but really the truth is that when we hold on and we're, we're kind of that control freak, that's, that's really what's underneath the right. Like I want to control yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I'm not there, if I'm not right in it, you know, they're not going to do the job right. And customers are, we have all these weird fantasies and monkey mind fantasies. Oh yeah. That honestly, is really just at its base is fear. It's fear of stepping fully into that leadership role. And I was just going to say, there's our sound bite. You said it a little from cleaner to leader. What what's the mindset that's required to go from cleaner to leader? And cleaner doesn't just mean you cleaning by yourself. I mean, like you being the one that fills in for people who call out. You're the one that's out there you know, um, being in the field, having to fill in and take supplies and, you know, all the, every part of you being in the world of cleaning is means you are hiding from leadership yes. and that you are doing your company a disservice mm -hmm. by not stepping into leadership. I'm so glad you said that. Cause that's what I was thinking in my head. Um, um, as long as I was still cleaning shoulder to shoulder with them, they were never going to respect me or see me as a leader. That's right. And, and unless I got out of that role completely, like you said, no, I'm not plan B, I'm not plan C and I'm not plan D. Right. Um, and 
the team, your, your team cannot grow if they don't have a leader and they're, they, you have to gain the respect of them and you can't be shoulder to shoulder with them. You just can't, it won't work. It's the same. It's the same reason that if you've got kids, you can't go to school with them. You can't, you know, hang out in the hallways with them at school. You can't keep them away from bullies. You can't, you know, you can't hold their hand through their whole school process. And, and we think, well, that's crazy. We wouldn't do that. That is exactly what we do in our business, right? We're, we're Mm -hmm. trying to hang out with our kids and then try to be a leader at the same time. And we can't. And it's, it's just true that when we're really ready, this is mindset, when we're really, truly ready to be the leader that our business needs, it's not just delegating tasks. It's really, truly about cultivating people who can think on their own. So you're, if you're still busy, basically making all the decisions and thinking for them, they also then don't have the ability to think on their own. And that's a new level of, I know that you went through that also Mm -hmm. of of letting go of this idea that, oh gosh, I don't tell them every single thing to do, that they're Mm -hmm. not going to do anything or they're going to do it all wrong. But really in reality, I remember when you made this decision that you were going to delegate to them the thinking the reasoning ability to problem solve, do it on their own. It wasn't just the tasks, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Empowering them to making, you know, I hired them for a reason. I picked them out because they had values that, that matched the company. Yes. Um, So I had to let go and know that it was okay. Even if they did make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Um, and that's how they learn. And that's how they learn and, um, empowering them to, um, that they can do it. Like I, you know, you're, you're amazing. I I believe in you. You've got this, um, you know, you can do it. And just those simple little phrases is all it takes. And, um, just them believing in themselves. So, um, you know, that was really key is, is for me just to let go, let them do it and be the leader and empower them. And when I, when I realized that a little bit later on down the road, things got better and better. So, um, you know, there's always going to be mistakes and I, and I had to get okay with mistakes being made. It's not the end of the world. Um, and if you're a great leader, then, you know, when a mistake does get made, um, you handle it in a good fashion and, and it's okay. So, um, I would say that's the best mark of a leader. Isn't, isn't that nothing goes wrong, right? Because that's not real world. It's when something goes wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Not if, (laughs) right. Not if, but when and how you handle it. And the only way you get good at it is to allow things to go wrong. And mm-hmm. to allow it to not be perfect. And, um, and I just, I love this. So, so what would you say to clean nation out there? Who's they're at varying levels. They may be already past a million dollars in their, in their business. They could be, you know, just starting up. What would you say you have discovered from a mindset perspective? What's the one biggest myth? or misunderstanding <laughs> something that, that doesn't serve cleaning company owners from a mindset pers- or a belief perspective? What's one thing that you think is a, is a myth? Um, that nobody else can do it like me. Huh. There's nobody else out there that can, but, but they don't know how to make the schedule. Nobody else will ever be able to do that. <laughs> There's nobody, always somebody. <laughs> nobody cares as much as I do. Nobody, nobody can do it the way that, I can. Yeah, nobody, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, probably the biggest myth for me as an individual is um, is that one. Nobody and else can do it as good as me. Limiting belief. <laughs> What's a? Li- I mean, that's really truly. So talk about stunting your own growth, yeah. right, in your business and believing that you're the only one, I'm the only one I can, it's, 
I'm the only one who can do it right. I'm the only one who cares enough. I'm the only one that will keep you small way too long. So to that end, what, uh, give an example for everyone. If you want, if they want to shift that, let's say they, maybe they bought into that a couple of times. Like, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> what's a, what's a, an empowered belief that you've replaced that old myth belief with? I know that there is somebody out there that can do it better than me. <laughs> I mean, and I, I they want to work for me and they want to work for me and they will care. Um, and they genuinely want this business to be successful. Just like, just like I do. Right. And those people are out there. <laughs> it's, it doesn't all have to be me. It doesn't all have to be the owner. Absolutely. They do exist. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and those, those, we, you've all heard at clean nation value, uh, core values matched people when they match your core values, they do care. That's the whole point is that when they match your values, that if you care, then of course they would care. That's part of the alignment. And mm -hmm. so if you out there right now, listening, Clean Nation, if you aren't super clear on your North Star um, core values, then I would say definitely start there. Right, Christina? I mean, we, yes. we talk a lot That's about core values. And mm -hmm. so when you're looking for those people that you're ready to step into your leadership, right? Going from cleaner to leader, <laughs> yes. ready to do that. You're ready to install the systems that are necessary to, to build the business and scale it the way you need to. It really does start with you and your core values first. Absolutely. Ab absolutely. And awesome. not what you want them to be, but what they truly what they are. Want for you, what your core values are as a human being, because that's what the whole business is going to be built on. Because um, you can't really fake that. You no. Know? Yeah. 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 Because I know I, we hear a lot of people that will come in and they try to create yes. core values and they're, they, they try to craft them to, to kind of like to guide people's behaviors mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily really fully aligned with those core values. They're not living those core values right now. They're, they're more aspirations than they are core values. And I think that's a pretty big misconception about core values. Core values are, they come through you. You're not, you don't create them. They are part of you. They are already who you are. And, and believe me, it's a whole lot easier to guide your company and to create a culture based on who you already are, not saying that we don't get better. We always aspire to get better, but your core values really don't change that much over time. You may articulate them a little bit differently, recraft them, you know, as you evolve um, to express them a little bit differently, but the core values are, are really fundamental as, as to who you are. Do you mind sharing what your core values are? Yes. Um, so have fun, help others make money and grow. As long as they are always growing. I, um, I love people who are motivated and driven and want to learn more. Um, I just really value that in people. Mm -hmm. And and there's so much, uh, really, there's so much in those core values. That's such a fantastic um, North Star, as I call it, the, the top of the yeah. pyramid, right? That guides everything that you do. And I could totally see that. And you as a leader, yeah. um, sharing those core values with the people that come in and having them demonstrate daily, like that within their actions, how they show up, how they interact with each other is mm -hmm. expressed through those core values. I love that. Okay. Well, as we wrap up, Christina, you've been amazing as always. Oh, this was fun. <laughs> yeah. I've enjoyed this. What's one tip? If you were to give a uh, clean nation out there a tip, what would it be? Anything that you think would help? Them? If you are struggling with something, ask for help. Mm -hmm. Do not stay stuck in, <laughs> do not stay stuck where you're at because there is somebody out there who has been through the same thing and who has overcome and just reach out, reach out in the Facebook group, just like I did. 
I, yes. I was struggling and I was so tired of it. And I was like, I have to have help. And that was the only place I knew to go to and help was received. So don't stay stuck. I, amen. Amen. We are all about that here. And, and listen, you can always go to growmycleaningcompany.com and watch our amazing webinar where Mike teaches and gives a lot of content and, and guidance for free. And if you want to just hop on a phone call with one of us, our coaches are amazing. You can go yes. to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a call just like Miss Christina did here about a year ago. And Absolutely. here we are a year later celebrating. That's what we do here. Celebrate. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Christina, for joining us and Clean Nation. Just ask. I mean, I'm a big fan of you don't get what you don't ask for. So go out there and take some initiative and ask for what you want. Awesome. Whoops. Ah. Stop. <laughs> Thank God for editing. I'm like right at the end. Know, right at the end. But at least it was right at the end. Oh mm -hmm. my God. Is this stop? Stop. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.